Hello everyone. Um, today I want to do what hopefully actually will be a short video, just addressing what is the fairy faith. And you'll see the term fairy faith uh, used in a variety of ways, um, some of them more or less accurate than others. Uh, but you'll also see it used in academia. Um, it's the title of a book. I've recommended the book previously, Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries by Evan Wentz. Um, that came out in 1911. Uh, it is a good book. I do like it. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, it has its good points and it has its flaws. Um, it's got a lot of really good anecdotal material, which I like and recommend. It has some scholarly essays, which at the time were considered quality material. A um, hundred years later have not aged well at all. Um, so the more scholarly material in that particular book need to be taken with a large grain of salt. Uh, but that's probably one of the more well-known examples of a book title including uh, the name Fairy Faith. There's also a documentary, you can find it up here on YouTube, called The Fairy Faith. Um, that came out about 10-15 years ago, uh, originally on DVD, um, but again, you can find it now on YouTube which um, is sort of a survey of different fairy beliefs. Um, that's another example of where you can find the title, uh, the term in use as a title. So, what is the fairy faith? Um, the simplest explanation really is that the term fairy faith refers to the entire corpus of beliefs and practices relating to the fairies, to otherworldly beings. The term faith is a bit of a misnomer, and it is often misinterpreted. It refers to belief in the existence of fairies as independent beings with agency that can interact with humans and influence humans' lives in ways that can be positive or negative, and therefore need to be treated with respect and uh, given offerings, propitiated, we need to have, uh, you know, protections against in some cases. Sorry, there's a very loud plane going overhead. Every time I do these videos with fairy themes, I always end up with either some weird technical difficulty or apparently like a very loud interference. My apologies for that. Sometimes you just have to roll with the, the fun fey interference and it could be worse. So, as I was saying, um, these are beings who were seen as being uh, as real as humans, but um, existing in a different way. Um, so when we talk about the term faith in relation to fairies, it's um, faith in their existence and belief in their existence um, and their ability to affect and influence um, human beings. It's not religious faith, and I think that's where sometimes people get a little um, confused, if you will. Uh, the fairy faith itself is not a religion. Um, it also is not specific to a religion. So while we do see the bulk of um, fairy faith adherents, if you will, um, people who believe in the fairies and have this um, accumulated uh, folk belief and practice that we would sort of label under the title of fairy faith, um, the majority of them are Christian, uh, the vast majority of them are Catholic. However, the fairy faith itself is not explicitly Catholic, and you can practice it, you can be a part of what we would term the fairy faith without being either Catholic or Christian, following any religion. You could be agnostic, um, you could be an atheist in the sense of not believing in any specific higher divine power, but believing in um, animistic powers or believing in the good people uh, themselves and uh, follow the fairy faith. There's quite a few quotes you'll find um, in Yeats and uh, even in modern material 
You'll find examples if you um, talk to people in the living cultures, um, interviews with people in the living cultures, where they will often say, uh, when you bring up the subject of religion, um, people who are not necessarily practicing Christians, that they don't believe in heaven or hell, they don't necessarily believe in God, but they're not going to do anything to offend the good people. Um, and that sort of speaks to what the fairy faith is in a wider sense. Um, it's not attached to a specific religious belief. It's not dependent on a specific wider religious belief. It exists sort of separate from and independent from um, any particular religion. And this is why I say that the term faith being involved with it is something of a misnomer. People tend to hear that and assume there is some wider religious connotation. Now, mind you, a great deal of the material that we see in the folk traditions that are part of the fairy faith are religious in nature. Um, quite a lot, particularly of the um, anthropopoeic material, the protective material relating to fairies, does rely on Christianity. Um, on the Bible, on Christian prayers, on Christian symbols. So that does form a layer of this belief system, this wider traditional belief system. And that has to be taken into account. When you are studying the fairy faith or um, researching it, looking into the folklore around it, uh, trying to understand what it is, um, trying to practice it. Um, I don't want to say practice because it's not quite the right term when we're talking about the fairy faith at large, but incorporate it, if you will, into your own religious beliefs, into your own spirituality, into your own daily life. Uh, you have to understand, you really can't entirely separate out um, the layers that have gone into creating it. Um, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years, um, over a thousand years, thousands of years, we really don't know how long, of folk belief, uh, generations and generations and generations of folk belief that have built upon each other um, and created what we have as the fairy faith today. And you can't take out entirely or discount um, the religious aspects of the people who have been practicing it for all this time. And I say that as someone who myself is not Christian and does not utilize the explicitly Christian material within the fairy faith. But I think you have to understand when you're looking at what the fairy faith is, that that is um, an integral part of a lot of it. Uh, you can certainly look at it and um, pick apart which cosmology, which aspects of it, which practices, which beliefs are more specifically based in Christian influence. But you have to understand that that is an integral part of what the fairy faith in a wider sense is, which is not to contradict my earlier statement that the fairy faith itself is without religion because that is still true. The fairy faith at large um, is simply the practices and beliefs associated with the fairies themselves. And that does not require any inherent religious belief. But you have to go into an understanding of the fairy faith with an understanding that it has been influenced by those generations of um, deeply Christian, usually Catholic, people who have practiced it. And um, again, I don't really like to practice as a verb when we're talking about the fairy faith, but if that makes sense to everyone. Um, it's like looking at a tapestry. Uh, you can sort of trace which threads belong to which particular influence, but you really couldn't pick out those threads easily without ruining the tapestry itself. So we can very simply define the fairy faith as the bulk of beliefs and practices relating to fairies, but it's a lot more complicated 
to really discuss in detail what those beliefs and practices are um, without getting into a lot of complicated discussions about cosmology, the history of beliefs, the evolutions of beliefs and practices as different cultural influences have come in, um, which is why um, all of my videos up to this point have ended up being 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes in the case of the last one. Um, because all of my videos are trying to focus on different aspects of the fairy faith, um, and particularly different aspects of the traditional fairy faith that are um, often misunderstood, misconstrued, or misrepresented in modern American um, popular culture. So, hopefully this clarifies what the fairy faith is. Um, we do see the fairy faith being incorporated as part of other practices. So it is entirely possible because the fairy faith itself has no overarching religion to be a witch or a pagan or um, someone with any other type of spirituality and incorporate the fairy faith into your belief system. I do it. Um, many different people do it. You just have to do it with the understanding um, of what the fairy faith itself is, um, which is that um, sort of bulk of beliefs, that entire system. And um, when we are talking about the fairy faith, I should mention, uh, it generally is understood to be explicitly the Celtic beliefs. Um, so the beliefs of the six uh, modern Celtic nations, um, Ireland, Scotland, the Isle of Man, Cornwall, Wales, and uh, Brittany. Um, that is generally where people look when they're studying the um, folklore and beliefs and practices and material relating to what would be defined as the fairy faith. So hopefully that clarifies what the fairy faith is, um, what we are looking at when we are looking at the fairy faith and why it is both a simple thing to define and a little more complex than some people give it credit for. And this is going to be one of my shorter videos. Uh, I was just trying to touch on that quickly um, so that people who are using the term have a better understanding of what it is uh, and can hopefully use it accurately. Uh, and I will see everyone in my next video. Have a nice day.